Welcome to Bled Talk, the podcast where insightful conversations meet language learning. I'm your host, Samuel Bledsoe, and on this show, we dive deep into a variety of topics with fascinating guests from all walks of life. Whether you're an English learner looking to sharpen your language skills, or simply someone who enjoys thought-provoking discussions, Bled Talk is something for you. From engaging interviews to solo episodes filled with knowledge and inspiration, join us as we explore the world one conversation at a time. Get ready for a journey of learning, curiosity, and meaningful dialogues. Welcome to Bled Talk. Welcome, everybody, this week to this episode of Bled Talk. We're here with Freddie, and he is from the UK, and he has a very successful Instagram page. It's called uh, Parada Inglesa, and he, it's really great content because he talks about uh, he talks about little cultural differences and things that he's learned within his experience here in Brazil. And it's great content. You can find it on Instagram and on TikTok. So I encourage all of you to go and find him. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started. And Freddie, go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself. Kind of tell us, you know, where you come from and kind of how you got to where you are today. Sure. Well, thank you for having me on. For, uh, first of all, it's a so it's not often I get invited to talk about myself. So let's see how I do. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Freddie. I'm I'm from the UK. I was born in London. I studied there. I also lived in uh, France for a while. Uh, my parents went there for work, and I ended up studying uh, for about eight years there. And then I um, I'd never been to Brazil before. Didn't speak Portuguese. And then I met my soon-to-be wife, who came to visit London uh, about ten years ago to see a friend of hers who was dating a friend of mine. And we ended up uh, getting together. I flew to Brazil to uh, kind of see what it was like and, and meet her family. And um, decided we really liked it. We got married. Uh, she came to stay in the UK for a bit. Then we realized it made more sense for us to stay in Brazil. So shortly afterwards, we moved to Sao Paulo. And um, we've been there ever since. And um, yeah, what else? I, I was working home office before home office was a thing. So I was able to move to Brazil pretty easily, like no questions asked. Um, and I would fly back occasionally to Europe to, for work and to see my family, which is really helpful. Um, then I moved to an agency, a public relations agency here in Sao Paulo um, that kind of helps international businesses come to Brazil and on the rest of Latin America. And during the pandemic, I had a bit of spare time. So I started the Instagram and, and TikTok channels because people had told me, you know, you should you should talk about what it's like. To, they were always kind of taken aback when I would give them my perspective and things. And they're like, oh, this is weird. We don't do this. We don't do it that way in the UK. Or like, this is completely different. Or when I would talk about like novella or, you know, strange stuff like that. So it ended up becoming just a thing I did for fun. And I would, after a year, I had no, almost no followers and I was about to give up. Yeah. Uh, but then it suddenly went, became successful. So I thought I'd better carry on. And no, been to that's state. awesome. That's fantastic. So it was like you you talked to a lot of people when you were here, and you you weren't afraid to share your your thoughts and your opinions about things and yeah. things that are different. Because I've noticed uh, with a lot of uh, a lot of gringos, right, with a lot of people who come here from outside, sometimes they're a little nervous to share, you know, what they think and what they mm. what they see is different and what how you know how they see it. And I, cause my, my wife, sometimes she gets a little, um, I guess the word would be irritated with me because I'm too honest, if that makes sense. Cause she'll, we'll talk about something and I'll just say, yeah, no, I, this is how I did it back home. And I, you know, I don't like this or, or, you know, maybe I'll say, I really like how you guys do this because at home we do it this way and these things. And she's like, you just share so much information. And I was like, <laughs> You don't have to say it. I don't know. I, I need to tell somebody, right? I need to get, yeah, the, yeah. get the idea out. That's awesome. And when you met your wife, did she speak English pretty well or? Yes. She so. she studied English here and her, her parents spoke English and she had visited the US and the UK a few times before that. So that's how we were able to communicate initially. And then I started learning Portuguese using Duolingo, basically just like to see what it was like. And I would, we, I would have conversations with Gabriela in over Skype in Portuguese, like kind of slowly to begin with. And then I picked it up and I basically just copied what she was saying. And I already spoke French fluently. And that I think helped a lot because 
I Portuguese for me is a lot closer to French than it is to English. So it was like if I didn't if I didn't know a word in Portuguese, I would just say the word in French, I hope for the best. And right. and yeah. sometimes it worked and I could I could be understood kind of thing. So that helped a lot. Uh but within like three months of meeting her at New Year's, I flew out to, uh, here for Carnival and met her whole family and, and some of them didn't speak English, so I had to learn Portuguese really quickly, basically. <laughs> And then at the end of the carnival week, I proposed in Portuguese uh, based to our parents, basically, and asked their permission. Um, I'm still not really sure what I said. <laughs> I was just kind of improvising. But and then two, two months after that, I went to the registry office and married, got married in Portuguese. Again, I don't really know what I was agreeing to. But <laughs> so you just read it and then, then yeah. if everybody says yes and is smiling, then it's sure to be a good thing. Yeah. Well, my wife was like, I'm, we arrived like the day before on the plane. She was like, look, whatever the judge says, just say yes and get it over with. And the first thing he asked me was, um, how long have you been in Brazil? And I said, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so and my wife was like, no, but come on. Like, if because if you realized I didn't speak Portuguese, it would have just annulled the whole ceremony. Uh, uh, so that was a tense. But eventually I, I got I got into it and I answered his questions and it all it all worked out. Yeah, no, that's cool. And do you and your wife speak Portuguese most of the time, or do you guys speak English? Well, pretty much always Portuguese. Like we have, we tried doing English Wednesdays, but she would just always leave the house on a Wednesday. So <laughs> she would find some <laughs> excuse. So we we gave up on that. But like I, I speak to my family a lot on online, and she joins in and speaks English then. And we watch a lot of English stuff on Netflix and stuff. So it's pretty. Pretty well balanced. Their English isn't getting worse. Put it that way. <laughs> well, that's good. It's. I was going to say I had a that that gives me a question to have for you. So, when you came here, I know you you tried to well, you needed to learn Portuguese and things like that. So, did you still watch movies and things in English, or did you just put everything into Portuguese and you're like, I'm gonna immerse myself? Um, I watched a lot of Brazilian stuff just because i didn't know anything about brazil i was like mm, okay so what and i watched documentaries with subtitles and i watched like uh novella when i got here i didn't they didn't have subtitles obviously but i kind of got the gist of what was happening and it was a it was a really intensive few months of just i would only we would only speak in portuguese i would just i wouldn't i didn't i don't really read in portuguese so much but like films i listen to a lot of music from brazil just to kind of get in the zone. And that helps a lot, I think, at the beginning. And nowadays, yeah, it's kind of 50 50, I'd say, between like Brazilian media and English language. Yeah. I, I, I understand that. I think the first, I guess, the first couple of months when I was in Brazil, I really tried to focus on just absorbing Portuguese and not, not speaking English, just trying to do that. And, and once I got to a point where I was comfortable with Portuguese, I think I just kind of decided that. In order to feel better, because I, I don't know if you have this feeling, maybe maybe you don't, maybe I'm just weird, but I feel like every once in a while, I, I do need to talk in English with somebody. I need to have some kind of, of conversation in English just so that I, I can say things the way that, you know, I naturally say them. And yeah. I mean, in Portuguese, I feel super confident. I feel like I can say anything that I want to say, but at the same time, it's, you know, it's not the same as saying it in your native, in your native language. And so yeah, I think I after some time I kind of, I needed to have like maybe a movie in English or play video games and, you know, just only be in that English mindset. Yeah. But do you, yeah, do you, and you do a free of uh, work, I guess, as well. You, you speak a lot of English. Yeah. Now, English. now I get to speak English a lot for work and that, <laughs> that definitely helps. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that it's something that's important. And do you think that was, do you think so? Do you think the Portuguese was easier because you learned French first or? I think so. It's, it's a lot closer and they're both Latin languages. They both, um, there's a lot of similarities but with the conjugations and there's like masculine and feminine nouns. So that helps. I never, I'm still not very good at masculine and feminine because I'm, as uh, like a native English speaker, we just don't really have that. So a lot of the times I'm just making it up. <laughs> but uh, really, this I, at right. least I had, I had some kind of frame of reference at least going in. And I did know some Spanish from school. I learned it as like a third language, but that was more of a, 
that got in the way. Like I, I would say Spanish words instead of, and everyone gets very offended when you do that. So I had to like make a conscious effort to actually forget all the Spanish that I knew because there was, I was getting confused. Like I was, I was speaking Spanish and not Portuguese. Um, but it helped. The one thing I, I mean, you were mentioning the need to speak English and I, I do a lot of that with my uh, family who I speak to a lot in my work. I mainly speak English there. So it's not like there's a good outlet there. But with French, I find I, I don't really speak it at all. And I, it kind of goes, it's like um, you get a bit rusty. It's like riding a bike. Mm. Like when I go back to France, well, my parents live in France. So when I go and visit them, I it comes back after a few days. But it's weird when, you, when you're in that limbo of trying to like get your brain switched from Portuguese to French. Yeah. Um, I, I remember once, the first time I took Gabriella to Paris, I was like, Leave this with me. I'm. I know what I'm doing. I'm fluent in French. And I walked up to the metro ticket office and was like, "Dois bilhetes de metro." I started speaking Portuguese just automatically. It was really embarrassing because I thought I would have like perfect French, but it, it takes a while to to switch well, back on. I found. And do you do you remember when you learned French and kind of that process that you had to go through? Was it was it like you you moved there so you had to learn, or did you kind of know some things before you went? No, we knew nothing, and, and we moved there um, kind of over the summer holidays when I was 10, and I would went straight into the new school year. Um, and Initially, I was going to go to like an international school that did half French, half English, but I failed the French test, so I didn't get in, and so I had to go to an all-French school <laughs> uh, just straight away within the first couple of weeks there. And I learned very quickly there how to speak French because it was either that or just like not know what what the hell was going on so yeah that it was a very similar kind of immersion technique that's good and do you think it was easier learning it younger like as a younger person or do you think that that yeah your brain's a lot more elastic and absorbent then i think it was a lot easier because my parents who moved at the same moved with me um had a lot much harder time looking it up also because i think they went to work in places that were mainly english speaking so it took them a lot longer to learn French than, than us. And still to this yeah. day, we're, we're a lot better than me. <laughs> so. I, I understand that. I've met people here in Brazil who have lived here, I think, six, seven, eight years, and they don't speak Portuguese. And no. I know people who moved to the U.S. with the full intention of learning how to speak English quickly. And they got there and they found a group of people that speak yeah. their own language. And they just stayed there and they, you know, kind of found all the expats and just decided. Yeah. We're gonna no, it's easy to fall to into other. the, like yeah. a couple of years ago, I went to, I had to go to work in Berlin, Germany for like six months. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make the most of this opportunity. I didn't really want to go, but like, since I'm going, I'm going to learn German. And I did Duolingo beforehand and was like, I want to, I want to do this. And when I got to Berlin, I went to the meetup. Uh, get together where you can practice German with other German speakers, other foreigners who want to learn German as well. And everyone just spoke English there. So there was, there, there was no need. I had no motivation. It was like, I can get by without German just fine. So I ended up not learning any. And it, it's true. It depends on your environment and your, with the incentives you have. Um, so sometimes it's the best, the best uh, situation is just like sink or swim. If you if you don't learn the language, then there's no way of communicating, kind of thing. Right, it can be scary, uh, but I, I think it pays off in, in the long term. Yeah, and I think in Europe it's also common for everybody to speak English as well, and so yeah, I think a lot of people don't feel as much pressure to to learn Done. the native uh, the native language of the country. Um, yeah. And when you when you came to Brazil, obviously the culture is a little different. Um, so was that easy or difficult? How was that transition from, you know, from British culture to Brazilian culture? Well, it was, I think it's a lot easier than say transitioning from Brazilian culture to English culture, because the biggest difference I found was everyone here was a lot more opening, open and welcoming and, uh, you know, just wants to talk and find out who you are. Whereas in the UK, you can go years without talking to like the, the guy sitting in the cubicle next to you, you know, and um, um, Gabriella, my wife, she had a really hard time adapting to that because 
I don't know, she just is a naturally outgoing person and wants to talk to people. Once she got the bus to her, uh, she was doing a language course for like a couple of months and every day she got the bus with the same people. And eventually she started to like initiate conversation with them. And she had like big dreams of doing like a, a secret Santa at the end of the year. Cause in Brazil, they do secret Santa on the bus. Uh, if you take the bus with the same people every day. Um, but they just ignored her completely. She was, she was really surprised. And I think that is a lot harder to get used to coming from Brazil than, than say me, all I had to deal with was a kind of slight discomfort that everyone wanted to talk to me all the time, but I got used to it in the end and it was, it's quite, I quite like it. Um, I think it's, it's, I would rather that than just complete blank. Like I respect your boundaries a hundred percent and I'll never talk to you kind of thing. Yeah. So it's, that was the biggest difference, but it's it's not one that I I struggled with. I just thought it was quite funny. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's interesting. And like in the U.S., for example, a lot of people here when they talk to me, they're always like, "Why why are Americans so like cold and reserved?" And I was like, "I, I they're not, but they are." Because I think it's like you have you have like England, where like you said, you can go years without talking to somebody, like talking. Talking to somebody, I did. I did a project comparing United States culture to UK culture, and that was something that they talked about. They were like, Americans are a little bit more open than than uh, than the English people, and I was like, right. I was like, that's weird because here in Brazil, people say that Americans are are very cold, and I think I always tell people, at least from my perspective, in the U.S., we talk to each other, but only if we feel like you would be comfortable with it. I don't know if that yeah. makes sense, but like. Here, I feel like it doesn't matter who you are. Like you're just, they're going to talk to you and you're going to talk to them and that's just how it's going to be. Whereas yep. like, in the U.S., it's like, I might say something and if the person responds in a, you know, a, a decent way, then, oh, okay, then I'll pursue a conversation. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. It's kind of like fishing, like kind of throw out yeah. the bait and if like they- Like small talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You kind of give a little bit of small talk and if they accept it, then- then you have that full conversation. So, well, I, but I do. I agree. feel like that's that's a good happy medium between like big talk in Brazil and no talk in the UK. Right? <laughs> small talk in the UK. Small talk is it's a good thing. And what would you? What was the? I I don't know about most difficult, but like what was one of the craziest differences for you between UK and Brazil? Well, there's the the whole the sharing again is kind of part of the being open and welcoming. Um, People kind of offer you things, uh, even though they don't really want to, just out of politeness. And yeah. you are then supposed to refuse out of politeness. And then it goes back and forth. And I, I what I learned was that if someone offers you like a or so, like a pastel or something, you refuse it first out of politeness. And then they offer you again and you refuse again. No, really, I'm fine. And then the third, if they offer you a third time, then it's genuine, then they really do want you to take it. Right. And at that point, it would be rude not to. Like, even if you don't want to take it, you have to out of politeness. Because I, I found this out the hard way. The first That first week in Brazil, uh, we were all at the beach uh, for carnival. Like The whole family were like dozens of people. And we had this, we made a lunch for everyone and everyone got like one piece of chicken, basically, because there was a lot of people. And Gabby's grandma out of politeness saw that I'd finished mine and, and she was like, would you like my, my chicken? And I'm like, yep, thank you. <laughs> and I just ate her only piece of chicken and everyone at the table was just astounded that I'd taken her literally. And because I guess in the UK, if you offer something, then it's just immediately right. authentic. Yeah, like, it's, there's no, there's no beating around the bush or anything. Either you just keep to yourself or you would generally offer. Um, so that's, there's kind of this choreographed back and forth uh when it comes to sharing stuff and like public um yeah. it's mainly food food and drink but like it's caught me out a few times and i need to just remember like out to three and uh yeah i, I made a few videos about that as a book i told i tell my wife like when my family offers something for her because my parents came and they had offered something to her and she was like no no and i was like no in the u.s if you say no that means <laughs> no and so she i'm like if you want the present then say yes you know mm. it's it's a simple if we ask you then that mean you know if we don't want to share something we don't offer right and so yeah. it's like it's kind of that that thought process but I, I think it's interesting and i remember uh i remember learning this because when i was a missionary in sao paulo 
Um, for some reason, we really like to buy those, you know, the little packages of, of cookies that they have here. Well, I don't know yep. for you, biscuits, right? <laughs> That's one of the big difference. Uh, yeah. But, you know, we, we would buy those and if you opened it next to somebody or like near somebody, you've had to offer to every person. Oh, yeah. Post yeah. And because the Americans, they often got called out and were like, like, wow, that's rude. And there's like, <laughs> what's rude? I'm just eating, you know, I'm eating my cookies. And and I actually ended up doing the opposite of what most people would think you would do. You know, you think, oh, he's going to learn and he, now he's going to offer to people. So what I did was I just never opened my cookies in front of people. <laughs> I just hide some, them. I would buy something and be like, "Oh, you're gonna eat those?" I'm like, "No, I'm just gonna keep them for later." And <laughs> I would wait until it was just me and one other person, or just me by myself, and then nice. then I would do it because I was that's, like, it's "Not that that's I didn't." Probably what I would do. <laughs> so it was not even that I didn't want to share. It's just that I know that most people would accept it, and then next thing you know, you bought a package of cookies, but you only bought uh, two because yeah. <laughs> makes everybody else had one too. Uh, but it's it's an interesting and what what is like a, a cultural difference that you really like here that you you're just happy that it happens here and you don't know why it doesn't happen back in you. Um, or maybe you do know what it happens. It's just you wish. Yeah, I, I don't know. Actually, there's a lot of. Let me think. Well, I guess I like. Um, the big difference is obviously uh, barbecues, <laughs> um, principally because in the UK, it's like, it's very rare that people have barbecues in the first place because of the weather, like it's always raining and there's only like three days a, a year when it's possible. But um, I like the way they do it in Brazil. It's, because it's a lot more of an institution and everyone just gets together and brings more food than anyone could possibly eat and just shares the responsibilities and has a big Make turns it into a party. Whereas in the UK, it's like the one barbecue I took Gabriella to. She was again horrified because um, they the host was like, "Just bring some food to put on the barbecue." So we we brought like some cold cuts of meat because we thought, "Oh, there'll be lots of meat there, so we'll bring like a starter." But no, everyone had brought like their own individual food in like shrink wrap Tupperware, uh, put it on the barbecue ate it they didn't share it and and then everyone just kind of sat around in silence with like one person talking at a time and i i thought this was kind of normal because i'd always that's what i've always known and but i was just like this isn't how you do a barbecue <laughs> this, is, this is really depressing and then i came to brazil and found out that like you know barbecues, just, i just <laughs> but people have but it's it's so much more of a I guess because it, it is sunnier and hotter and you can have them more frequently, but they just do it so much better. <laughs> like they have it, you can have it in your house on a, on a balcony. I guess some apartments are built with it, or you go up to someone's house with a garden and just, I don't know, it's just, you're guaranteed to have a really nice time. And, um, and they, they, there's like a balance to it. You start with the kind of, not the bad meat, but the meat that, <laughs> People are less likely to eat like the sausage and right, bread. Right, right. You, start, you and, start with everything because people are hungry and they're going to come. Yeah, and, you just to fill them up and they'll eat whatever. Right. And then, and then you, you save the good, the good, the cut. nice stuff when everyone's kind of filled up, filled up. And um, yeah, and then you have like a dessert or ice cream, whatever. I did and, that. Sorry, I was saying I did that one time. I, I let everybody eat, and then I got out the last, like the I think it, I had like a. Uh, a, a beef rib, like just a huge one, just wrapped up in tin foil, and I kind of let it cook off to the side. And then nice. I, had, uh, I also had a picanha, but I didn't cook the picanha until everybody everybody was like, "Oh, I think we're we're about ready to leave," because you know no they, more. Didn't, they didn't really want to to clean up, and they just kind of wanted to go. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah. okay, well, that's fine. I'm about ready to cook the the last of the meat." And then they see that it's picanha, they're like, "Oh," and it's like, "Oh no, but don't worry about it. You can go. It's okay." <laughs> I think we can stay a bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's that's a that's a good one. I think that that's a really good a good thing. And do you think that um, was it difficult for you and your wife to kind of adapt to each other's cultures? You guys have been together. You said for eight years now, right? Yep. But so yeah. so obviously you probably have had a lot of those discussions. But like, was it difficult at first to kind of adapt to how each other responded to certain situations? 
Yeah, I think the biggest issue we had at the beginning and even now is communication because I am, as an English guy, I'm very, I don't say anything unless I absolutely have to. And she, as I'm not sure whether this is like a Brazilian trait or just uh, a Gabriella trait, but she says a lot all the time and not, but doesn't necessarily say what she expects or wants from me kind of thing. It's just kind of, she implies it. And I think she, I've learned to be more expressive and kind of talk to her a bit more so she doesn't go crazy. And she has learned to be more direct about, it's the same thing as like sharing food is, you know, if you want something, just tell me, because I, I don't have the like 3D chess mentality of like figuring out what's behind. So there's, I think that's something that's changed quite a bit as we've, as we've gone on. Um, and I think that's maybe because we come from different cultures and we'll just try to like find a middle ground. Um, but again, I haven't married enough Brazilian people to know. Right. No, and that's, that's the fair, well, so that's a fair statement. Cause I think something that's interesting, I, I, tell, I tell people is for a long time, my wife and I, we would have our, our little arguments and mm. we would be like, how can you, you know, how can you do that? For example, so I'll give you a little one when we, we were maybe uh, maybe three or four months we were married and that was it. And um, I was going back to the United States because I had to get some papers for my visa. And mm-hmm. when I went back, I wanted to go in a t-shirt and just some normal normal shorts, you know, like athletic shorts. Yep. The, she was not happy about me going to the airport looking like that she was like you need to dress up you need to wear all these nice clothes and all these things and i was like no no i was like you don't know how long that flight is comfort, comfort above all that <laughs> yeah i was like i'm not about to go sit in a, a 12-hour flight in like tight jeans and a dress shirt yeah and and that was in looking back at it it was a really stupid fight but um you know that was something that was cultural it was because if you go to the U.S. and you fly around within the country, everybody's in like pajamas. Maybe the business guy is dressed in a suit, you know, because he's going to a meeting right after his flight. But anybody yeah. who's just kind of like traveling at most is like casual, you know, yeah. casual Friday or something. And here in Brazil, it's a little different. You know, people dress up to go get bread. And so yeah. like it, it was just something that we didn't understand. And because of that, um, later on, we kind of discover that sometimes we we see things in other, in each other, and we have to realize that it's a cultural thing. You know, yeah. like this is something that she grew up with, and it's just been in her culture since the beginning. And so, sure. I shouldn't get mad at her for just doing what she's used to doing. You know, yeah, I should be a little bit more open, and maybe you know, and maybe should be the same way with me. And then that's really how it's been because I've told her, I've said, you know. I'm, in the U.S., we just we just don't do this, you know. We don't do whatever this is, and mm. and she kind of understands that like I need to learn how to do it if she wants me to participate. Next, sure. kind of like how you were talking about like learning how to talk a little bit more because yeah, where you come from, that just wasn't that wasn't normal. Yeah. No, I think ideally you kind of take on the best bits of of the, the culture, and and they do the same, and you kind of and try and get rid of the worst aspects of both. Yeah. Kind of um, create your own personal culture yeah and even like we were talking today about having kids and how they were going to be like multi uh multi international whatever and we're like okay well we're going to get rid of the the shy english part definitely <laughs> but we don't want it to be too far into the brazilian like over overstepping the mark uh the, oversharing the, the small just talk get, yeah <laughs> just aim for like the middle ground um yeah, yeah. Which is a, another challenge, but that's for later on. <laughs> no, it's it's interesting. I know because I have I have a son, and he is one year and two, almost three months old. All right, uh, so fifth, I guess, fifteen months, as they they say in baby language. But um, so it's interesting because people always ask us, they're like, "Well, how how are you going to do language? Like, how are you going to teach him Portuguese? Are you going to teach him English?" And I was like, "Well." The thing is, is his mom, my my wife, she doesn't really speak too much English. And so Dang. she's not going to teach him English, but I can, and I can talk to him. He, he sees my family a lot. And so, um, and from talking with a lot of other people who have that similar situation, we've realized that, you know, 
I'm just going to have to kind of be like his English parent and my wife is going to have to be his, you know, his, his Portuguese parent. Yeah. And, and I think with culture, I think like what you said is really important, you know, kind of, I, I always tell people that, you know, we, we plan on moving back to the United States, but I don't want him to forget that he is Brazilian. I yeah. think that's, I think that's important, you know, just like how, if we were to live here, I wouldn't want him to forget that he's also American. You know, I want him to make sure that he knows both of his cultures and knows the history and knows kind of what things have happened and, you know, why, why we are the way we are. Cause I think it's important to know your history. Yeah. And you can just Perfect. like, you can pick and choose from two cultures instead of just one. It's fantastic. And yeah. you get two passports. <laughs> exactly. And you know, a lot more. And then if you if you go to the U S then you get to pay, you get to pay taxes in the U S and in Brazil. The same. Yeah. What an honor. <laughs> Isn't that special? <laughs> um, but no, and, and, you know, we're kind of getting close to, to the end here. I've really had a lot of fun with uh, our conversation, cool. but I want to know from you, you know, let's say you meet somebody who say, let's say you meet another, um, another British guy who just got here in Brazil. Did the same thing you did, except, you know, you've already went through the whole, the whole thing. Um, what would you tell him when like for him to prepare, like, what would you tell him? What's something that you would, you would give, what kind of advice? Um, I think just kind of go for it and not be afraid of being rejected or made fun of because Brazilians already do that. They just, if you, if they see that you're making an effort to get to know the place and they like you don't even have to be really enthusiastic you just have to be like open-minded um as long as you're not like openly criticizing the place they'll be really receptive and sorry my cat wants to <laughs> 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 it's all good. and like it's the same with the language don't be afraid of saying something wrong and people laughing at you because they won't like i mean they will laugh at you obviously brazilians laugh at you all the time but they're not it won't be out of meanness it'll be just out of like trying to make you feel at home and trying to make you feel comfortable and there's very little like malice or um even in the uk like people aren't mean but they can come across as mean because they don't talk to you as much as you might like uh which must be really hard for foreigners who, who move there but here is it's the opposite i mean the only issue you'll have is trying to get people to shut up and leave you alone <laughs> but, that's, but again they'll respect that if you if you're if they see that you're overwhelmed i was pretty overwhelmed the first time i came here and they're like okay we'll, just, we'll give him some space so they're really just welcoming and and open and they won't give you a hard time so i just like try your best and um and the people will respond and you'll have a great time <laughs> yeah absolutely that's awesome and uh, the last the last question what would you tell someone who is going to move to the uk from maybe from brazil like what what would you tell them that maybe your wife has kind of talked about how she felt and you're like hey this is what you're gonna feel or that you know you might go through this so do this yeah like which i kind of wish i had told her before we moved because i i it just didn't occur to me and she arrived in like midwinter it got dark at 2 p.m it was just and she come, was coming from the brazilian summer so it's just the complete opposite and that was really difficult I'm actually, I, I have just launched a book, an ebook for people looking to either visit or move to the UK, um, which I, I guess I could plug here. <laughs> yeah, what, go ahead, the, plug it in, tell it in, and then uh, later, uh, later you'll, you can give me the link and I'll put it into the description. Yeah, definitely. I haven't really started but, pushing it on my channels yet, but maybe in the new year, I think I'll, cause it's, it's pretty complete. You know, it's like how to, it, everything from like how to pay your taxes to how to book a plane ticket to it's everything you need to know. And the final section is just things that you should know that aren't, they're not really, um, they're just kind of intangible, but it's good to know in advance so you don't regret moving there because moving is a big step, obviously you need to. Yeah. Um, and you, you, there will be a lot of homesickness primarily because of the people and the weather and it's just the complete opposite of Brazil. Um, so I think you should know about that thing beforehand which is why we, we wrote the book me and uh, jessica who's my co-author and um just yeah like know what you're getting into uh it's the uk is obviously very romanticized in films and tv shows and books and harry potter and 
uh, it's, it, there can be quite a culture shock, culture shock from Brazil and a culture shock between the reality and the romanticized version of the UK. Right. So, um, yeah, just be aware that it does get dark every day, 2 p.m. during the winter, and that's like half the year. So if that's not what you're into, then then that England isn't the place for you kind of thing. Maybe but it's a different place. On the other hand, if, if you persist and you, you're in it for the long time and you you hammer away and you don't give up on people, then they actually turn out to be quite nice once you get to know them. <laughs> um, like they're not, they're, they're kind of shy and retiring but they're then they're decent i think kind of the people i know anyway so, yeah, so that, that would be my my message that's awesome that's fantastic so well i think when i'm, I'm not sure when you're going to really start pushing your your ebook but i'm sure when this episode is out you'll be already doing that because i yep I, I also wrote i wrote another i wrote an ebook recently about kind of just english to use in uh you know when you're traveling when you're just going cool. in a tourist so uh, and that'll probably be coming out soon too. So um, uh, that sounds pretty complimentary. To- <laughs> yeah, it'll be good. Dude, yeah. But download both of them, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> buy, buy them them. both. We'll get them both, and it'll be it'll be good. And I loved your advice. I think that that's wonderful. I think so many people go through culture shock and they don't know what it is, right? Then. Like culture shock isn't like you go somewhere you're like, oh wow, this is crazy. That's not that's not culture shock. That's just being shocked in general, right? <laughs> Culture yeah. shock is a lot more depressing and, and, and like aggravating. It's that feeling of like, I don't like where I am. Why am I here? Like you go through that whole movement, that whole personal feeling of like, I just made the worst choice of my life. And then, like you said, if you're persistent, you can get through it and realize that there's a lot of new opportunities. And I yeah. think everybody goes through it and they go through different things. But like you said, as long as you... You know, if you prepare for it, study for it, listen, you know, listening to people like you talk about it is something that I don't ever see anywhere. You know, like yeah. I think, think that's one reason why I really like my, my podcast is because if anything, I get to learn from people and just kind of how they see the world and what they think is the best way to prepare for doing the, these these crazy things that some people just don't even know where to start. So. Yeah, um, I think it's the best way to to prepare in advance is to just listen to reports and testimonies from people who's been there and done that, and just ordinary people. Like you don't want to, is yeah, you can see how the films and whatever, but Downton Abbey. But you do also want to listen to people, and I think nowadays it's quite easy with social media and I mean people just talk about that kind of stuff all the time. It's just a matter of finding them and, and listen to what they have to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, and just That's know cool. know what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Oops. You know, go in. Obviously, listen to people, but also go with an open mind and try and be accepting. Yeah. That's that's good. And and thank you everybody else for for listening to the episode and for and you know getting this far into it. And I'm so happy that we talked to Freddie and. I'm glad that I found you and that we were able to have this conversation. And yeah, thanks for having and, me on. It's, yeah, it's really good fun. If anybody has questions for for Freddie or anything, if you want to leave them in the comments, or you can send me a message or send him a message. And who knows? Maybe maybe in the future we can have a a part two and uh, <laughs> move on from that. But thank you, thank you, Freddie, once again. Do you have anything that you wanted to say before before we finish? No, thank you for having me on. And yeah, any questions, just let me know and I'd be happy to answer. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And we'll see you next time on Bled Talk. Thank you for listening to Bled Talk. Don't forget to subscribe and follow us for more content. We are on all of the popular podcast platforms like Spotify, Apple Podcast, and we're even on YouTube. Don't forget to send in your questions and your suggestions. Thank you once again and have a great day.